Let's give you a bound for a single function. Um, unfortunately, before I do that, I have to go through a lot of annoying notational changes. And I'm, I'm sorry about that, but uh, it's gonna make it easier when we go to the trouble um, of applying Huffington's inequality. Okay, so for each function in big F, uh, we're gonna create a loss function G, which just determines whether F made a mistake on that, that point. Okay, so remember F predicts negative one or one, uh, and y also is negative one or one, and so g, all it does is it tells you whether f made a mistake on y. Okay, so if we do that for each function f, we can create a whole bunch of these loss functions, and we can call that whole collection of loss functions big G. So for each, so each g, each g and big G, it takes a data point and tells you whether its corresponding function um, in big F gets that data point correct. Okay, now there is a bijection between f and g because for each f, you can easily compute its loss function g. And then for each g, you can go back to f. Okay, and that's pretty easy to see because, you know, if, if, if g of x and y is 1, you know that f made a mistake, right? And you know what y is. So you can just set f to be the opposite of y um, uh, if, if g is 1. And if g is 0, you just set f equal to y. So it's easy to go back and forth between them. All right, so in our new notation, uh, I'm writing the true risk as p true of g, uh, and then the empirical risk is p m of g, okay? So that's uh, the true risk of the empirical risk. And remember, the thing we want to be close is the true risk on g of n. g of n is the loss version of f of n, which was a function we got from modeling data in the last video. Okay, so we want the true risk of g of uh, the true risk of g n, which is actually the true risk of f n, to be close to the empirical risk of f n, which or the p m of g n, right? So this is just the generalization error, the difference between the true and empirical risks. All right, so keep changing notation. <laughs> now, instead of dragging x and y around, I just wanted to drag z around. So x and y together, that's z. And then this notation here, this bold z, that means we drew endpoints randomly from the distribution D on X cross Y, okay? So bold Z is our data set. So in the new notation, the difference between the true risk and the empirical risk looks like this. And um, this is, at this point, you can see very clearly that it's just the difference between an expectation and an average. And so you would expect that as N goes to infinity, this quantity goes to zero, and any number of bounds from the world of statistics can tell you that. However, we can actually do better. We want to do better. We don't just want to think about asymptotics as the number of data points goes to infinity. We actually want to do something with the data that we have, and so that's why we're going to use Huffington's inequality. So Huffington's inequality is a very famous tail bound from statistics, and um, it's very powerful, and it bounds how far an expectation is from an average. All right, so let's read it. So let z1 to zn be n iid random variables, and h is a bounded function. Um, so the bounds are a to b. Now for us, h is gonna be a loss function. So the bounds are gonna be between zero and one. The loss is either zero or it's one. So every, everywhere it says b minus a, that's just gonna be one. Okay, so don't worry about a and b. Then for any epsilon you pick, the probability that a bad thing happens, which is that the average in expectation are far from each other is small. And that small depends on some important quantities, namely the amount of data you have and the epsilon you chose. Good. So again, I, I want you to kind of not worry about this B minus A. That's not an important quantity here because again, it's just going to be one. Okay. So I want you to remember that the probability that something bad happens is less, is the probability that something bad happens is small. And that small is, um, 2e to the negative 2n epsilon squared, okay? So the quantities here that are important are, are n and epsilon and the, and the epsilon, okay? All right, cool. So um, we can bound how far the average is from the expectation. So I'm just going to continue to change <laughs> notation. I'm going to set the right-hand side of that thing equal to delta, and then I'm going to solve for epsilon. And I get this over here, and then I'm going to plug that back into the bound and apply Huffington's inequality to my function g instead of to h, which it was in its original theorem form. 
Okay, so what I get is that the probability that something bad happens, which is that the empirical risk and true risk are greater than that thing apart, that, prob that probability is less than delta. It's small. Cool. So this is our first kind of bound on the difference between the true and empirical risks. So this is our first kind of inkling of, of how to bound generalization error. Okay, again, generalization error is the difference between training and test error. Great, now this inequality that I've used, um, there's actually two versions of Huffings. There's probably about a million version of, versions of Huffings, but the version I have down there is what's called a two-sided Huffings inequality because it's looking at the difference between the average and the expectation in two ways, both too, too far up or too far down. But the truth is what we really want is that the, um, we really wanna make sure we don't overfit, right? So we actually only need one direction. We only need the direction where the uh, expectation is, is, is like way higher than the, um, than the average, right? So we can actually use a one-sided version of Huffington's inequality, which is over here. And that's the probability that something bad happens, which is that the true risk is much bigger than the empirical risk. That's what we really don't want to happen. Okay, so that's the one-sided version of Huffington's inequality. And now we're gonna use, um, we're gonna call the right-hand side delta and we're gonna use a trick called inversion. Now, if you've never seen inversion before, it's actually a really cool trick. Um, so in the Huffington's inequality bound right now, it says the probability that something bad happens is small. But the inverse of that is that the probability that something good happens is large. Okay, so, um, so here's the inverse. It says with high probability, right, with probability at least one minus delta, high probability, something good happens which is that the true risk minus the empirical risk is less than stuff. Oh, I'm sorry, this is Huffington's inequality. I have to actually apply it to the true and empirical risks, which is what I did right there. Okay, so it says that the true risk minus the empirical risk is less than some stuff. Okay, so I'm just gonna put the empirical risk on the other side here so that you can see the bound says that with high probability, the true risk is less than the empirical risk plus some stuff. So this is good, this is exactly where we wanna be because we want the true risk to be small, we can measure it, we can measure the empirical risk, that we have a handle on because we have our data set so we can measure that. And the stuff is all something that we know what it is, right? N is the number of data points, delta, the bound holds with probability at least one minus delta, we chose delta ourselves. we know what it is. And then B minus A is just one. So um, this is this is exactly what our what we need and it's, it's really kind of like the first thing we, we have um, to really, really get a handle on the, the true risk. Okay, so, um, however, I should mention there's a major caveat to this formulation because you, know, you might think we're done, but we're actually not. And in fact, this bound is totally useless. Uh, so interestingly, the bound doesn't apply when F comes from any real algorithm at all. And so that's why the story doesn't end here. And in fact, this is where the interesting part of the story just begins. And if you want to find out why this is true, hang around for the next video.